Hello, my name is Krishna Mahini. I'm going to do a video today on star trails and how we can capture those with a digital camera and measure the Earth's rotation rate using those trails. Behind me is a telescope I've had for over 40 years. I bought this when I was in high school and I use it to observe celestial objects and also to capture them in a in digital form on a, with my digital camera here. Uh, we will use a digital camera and a tripod in order to observe the star trails and to record them and make our measurements. If you've ever looked up in the night sky and looked at the stars for an extended period of time, you'll see that they gradually move across the sky. And this is of course due to the Earth's rotation. If you haven't really noticed it, the first thing I would recommend is to go out on a clear night and pick out a bright star and look at where it is in relation to nearby objects, a hill or a building or a tree, and then go back and look at it an hour or two later. And you'll observe that it's in a different part of the sky now. So what we're going to do is essentially capture that motion on a camera uh, by taking multiple pictures and make some measurements from that. And that's the purpose of our video today. One of the first things we'll need to do is determine where the North Celestial Pole is. The North Celestial Pole is an extension of the Earth's axis about which it rotates. And if we consider or imagine extending that axis infinitely out into space, then it will point to a certain position in the sky. With my telescope, when I take pictures, I have to take pictures for tens of seconds. And during that time, since we're looking at a very small patch of sky in the picture, the Earth's rotation will smear out the picture unless I'm able to move the telescope to follow the objects as they move in the sky. And so one of the axes of my telescope always has to be pointed at the North Celestial Pole. And you'll notice that there's a motor down here and a, and a gear that uh, turns the telescope about that axis at exactly the same rate as the Earth's rotation so that it can follow the object and not smear the image as as the exposure is being taken. Our first task then will be to determine the North Celestial Pole. Luckily there's a star called the North Star and uh, it's also known as Polaris that uh, we must find in the night sky and we will use that as the reference point for making our star trails. Today we're going to go ahead and set up everything that we need to take pictures of the sky around Polaris. Uh, we have a few things that we need. Okay, we, we have our camera, we have a tripod, a level, and a compass. We're going to use the compass to determine the direction north to get ourselves roughly lined up. And I'm going to put it right down here, it's somewhat on level. Okay, and basically it, the arrow that lined up with the direction I placed it pretty much, but there's a little fine adjustment. Okay, so that way is north. We just need to be approximate so we know which way to look. Look up that way. We're going to set up the tripod. Let's get the legs unfolded. Make sure they're all clamped back in place so that we'll have a nice sturdy base for the camera. And the direction we had determined 
be north, we'll place one of the legs that way. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is get the surface on which the camera mounts uh, approximately level. Zoom in on that. Okay. So we'll get it approximately level using the tilt adjustment on the tripod. Do it that way as well as this way. In order to get the level on the other direction, we'll have to raise a leg or lower a leg. So we'll work on, on that. Okay, we have the surface leveled in both directions. Now we attach the camera. And that's the setup. We have to take the lens cap off, of course, but uh, we'll have to wait for night and uh, then tilt the camera up towards Polaris, in the general vicinity of Polaris, and then take our pictures. Okay, this is a short introduction to DSLR cameras, and these are the type of cameras that are digital, single lens reflex as they're called. They have removable lenses and uh, the main feature that we need is that we need to be able to do manual adjustments of everything. We need to do manual focusing and we need to be able to do manual exposure settings. So those are basically the uh, requirements in order to be able to take pictures of the stars at night. Let me show you. I'll take the cap off of the cover. This has no lens on it right now. This is just the camera body. And if I open it, you'll see that there's basically a mirror inside of it right now. And that's the mirror that directs the uh, view up to the viewfinder of the camera. And uh, a lot of Digital cameras have a screen that will show you what's what the camera is looking at, but uh, typically you can use the viewfinder as well. And the primary setting that you need to do on the camera is to put it in the manual mode. There's an M on the dial for the mode settings, so this one's already set on M. And if we want to take pictures with our normal camera lens, this is the lens that came with this particular Nikon D3200 camera. And um, so let's just put it on there. It's a 18 millimeter to 55 millimeter zoom lens, but pretty much any lens uh, that comes with a camera will work. We don't need a lot of zoom. We don't want to use a lot of zoom here for this uh, activity. So I've got the camera lens mounted in there. And besides the uh, manual setting or the manual mode for the camera, you want to make sure that you flip the focusing mode for the camera to manual. So on the lens there will be a, a automatic or a manual setting for focus and you want to do that in manual mode. 
And typically the focusing is just uh, is just the turning a lens here so that it moves in and out. If you do have a zoom lens for the camera, then the other uh, rotation adjustment is for the zoom. And, and generally, for right now, just leave it on the widest angle that you have available and focus. Uh, wor worry about the focus more than anything else. Okay, as far as uh, I'm going to turn on the camera and you know, the screen will show you some settings. There's uh, one setting for the exposure time. And right now it's set on a fifth of a second. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it's also got an aperture setting. It's called, uh, which is basically related to the size of the iris through which the light comes through in the camera lens. It's set at f4. Uh, I just clicked the shutter there accidentally. Okay, and then the third setting, besides the exposure time and the aperture is the ISO setting. In the past, when film cameras were around, the ISO setting was a film sensitivity number. And on a digital camera, it has to do with how much amplification the, the signal is, uh, is amplified. So uh, on the camera settings for the exposure, you'll need to set the ISO the aperture setting and the exposure time. The exposure time will generally be uh, 10 to 15 seconds for making your star trails. The aperture should be probably fairly wide. You can experiment with it. Um, but f4 or so is okay. And the ISO setting I used for making the star trails that you'll see in this video uh, was 1600. You can also try 800. There may be a little less noise in the image. So these are basically the three settings that you'll have to play with. And you'll have to work on um, doing the manual focusing on the stars. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. The other setting that you want to do on your camera is to set the time, the date and time, so that it will time tag the um, images that you take, because that will be important in determining how much time has elapsed from the start of your trail to the end of your trail for each of the stars in your image. Okay. For the camera that you use, here's a checklist of different things that you'll want to be able to do in setting it up. On my camera, the focus adjustment, zoom adjustment, and the camera mode settings are indicated with the arrows. There's also a disable autofocus on the lens and the screen shows the various exposure settings as marked. To photograph star trail sequences, here are some recommended settings for the exposure time, ISO sensitivity, the zoom, and the aperture. You'll need to take pictures over a duration of about 20 minutes, and I suggest taking at least one exposure per minute. It's sunset now, and as we wait for the sky to darken, we set up the tripod and camera and tilt the camera up to the same angle as our latitude, which will point us towards Polaris. Although Polaris is not the brightest star in the night sky, it is the brightest star near the celestial North Pole. A short five second exposure will help you to identify Polaris and center your field of view. After the sky darkens, it's time to start taking your sequence of exposures. 
Here we have one of our early pictures with the camera pointed north. And this is the star Polaris. As you can see, uh, the trees are lit up by a nearby sodium street lamp. But our exposure time of 15 seconds still allows us to see a lot of stars. If you're unfamiliar with the stars in the night sky, you can go to the website https nova.astrometry.net. This website allows you to upload a picture, and it can be a picture just like this one. It will identify the stars and label them. This is an example of the annotation that the website astrometry.net did on the picture. And as you can see, it outlines the constellation. This is the constellation Ursa Minor, or the Little Bear, also known as the Little Dipper. Polaris is at the end of the handle. The website also allows you to overlay a grid of celestial coordinates on the image. Here, the circles are like the circles of latitude on the Earth that are projected into space. And then the central point of the circles is the actual celestial North Pole. You can see that Polaris is offset a little bit from the celestial North Pole. For our purpose, we will treat Polaris as though it were at the celestial North Pole. Okay, now that we have images downloaded to our computer, we'll take a look at what we've got here. I'm going to start right about here. Picture of the night sky pointing towards Polaris. Look at the succession of images. We'll see that the stars appear to rotate here in the counterclockwise direction about Polaris. And Polaris, of course, is here. We'll zoom in on that. You can see it looks like it's a little heart-shaped formation of stars. This is known as the engagement ring of Polaris, with Polaris being the diamond. In traditional Hindu weddings, at the end of the ceremony, the priest takes the groom and the bride outside and points them to the direction of Polaris. We will use a series of five images. These are going to be 513 through 517. We'll use those five images for the star trails. I'm going to open the images in GIMP so that we can overlay them. So our first image is 513, and I'll choose to use GIMP. Okay, so we have the image here, and we have two additional dialogues, a layers dialogue and a toolbox dialogue. You can find these on the Windows menu. We have to open the su subsequent images in the series using layers. And so we go to the File menu and choose Open as Layers. And the next one in the sequence is 514. So we'll select that and open it. And now you'll see that 514 is in the Layers dialog. And what we're looking at is the top layer here. We'll repeat this process for all of the subsequent layers. And at that point, we'll have them all loaded into GIMP. Okay, we have uh, loaded all of the five layers into GIMP, and I've maximized GIMP on the screen here. We can't see any star trails in the image because we're looking at the very top layer, the last image that we loaded. And what we need to do is adjust the opacity of each of these layers so that we can see down through to the images below that were taken at earlier times. First, we'll zoom in on the 
image so that we can see a little bit more clearly. The opacities are initially all set to 100%. The lowest layer will remain at 100% and we will change the next layer up to 50%. Now we will re reduce the remaining top layer opacities by something a little less than 50% and make all of the images visible. I've gone ahead and adjusted the remaining layer opacities. Now we'll zoom in and take a look to see what we have. We can see here in the image now very nice star trails from the bright stars in this picture and we have five different images of each star at different times forming the star trail. We're going to try to measure the angular size of this trail relative to the center of rotation which we'll take to be Polaris. First we'll get these dialogues moved a little bit out of the way and then select the measurement tool. The measurement tool allows us to measure distances and angles between points in the image. Here you can see that the distance from one end of a star trail to another point in the image is measured to be 623.4 pixels and the angle with respect to horizontal is 21.75 degrees. We'll pull a measurement line from one end of our star trail to Polaris. Because we're so zoomed in on the image, it's going to take a few seconds to get there. There it is. We'll put the other end of the measurement line in the center of Polaris and click on the button. If you're unsure of whether the star is Polaris, you can scroll up a little bit to see whether or not it's at the tip of this heart-shaped formation of stars that we pointed out earlier. The measurement line tells us that the angle from horizontal from one end of the star trail to Polaris is 37.71 degrees. We'll now have to go back and measure the angle from the other end of the star trail to Polaris to see how much of an angle the star has traced out.
can read the new angle from the other end of the star trail to be 38.57 degrees. We can determine the rotation rate of the Earth if we know the time when the first image in the star trail was taken and the time when the last image in the star trail was taken. Then we can determine the time elapsed for the trail and divide the arc angle by the time to obtain the rotation rate. Let's go back to the file view and take a look at the timestamp of the first file. You see that it was taken at 2019.38. The last image in the trail, number 517, was taken at 2022.46. We can now take the difference between the timestamps of the last image and the first image in our start trail and compute the rotation rate of the Earth as well as its measured period. So the elapsed time we, we find is 188 seconds. The rotation rate is just our arc angle, our measured arc angle divided by the elapsed time. And the measured period of the Earth's rotation will then be 360 degrees divided by our rotation rate. The accepted value of the Earth's period of rotation is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. It's actually a, f a little bit over 4 seconds, but we'll ignore that. This amounts to 86,164 seconds. First of all, why is this not 24 hours? Do you have an idea? It's something to think about. What is our daily period of 24 hours based on. It's not quite exactly the full rotation period of the Earth. You should check your measured value for the Earth's period of rotation against the accepted value. You can compute a percentage error as your measured value minus the accepted value divided by the accepted value and then multiply that by 100% to get a percent error.